On this video, I would like to share with you an explanation that will make you understand once and for all how LLMs, large language models like ChatGPT work. I realized that the less we know about AI, the more magical it seems. But when we study and we learn more about it, that layer of magic and mystery goes away. And we end up realizing that it's a very impressive technical accomplishment, for sure. But that it is not magical or intelligent at all. This video and its explanations are inspired by a great one hour and a half talk that I watched on understanding AI given by the city of Spotify, which I recommend you watch if you have the time. Because I know many of you don't have the time to watch it, I decided to make this video where I'm hoping to distill and summarize the talk as much as possible, so we can understand on record time how ChatGPT works from the inside. Contrary to what you might think, understanding how ChatGPT and other LLMs work isn't that hard. As you're about to see, conceptually is quite simple. What is hard is the technical part, turning those concepts into code, which is the topic for another very long video. To understand ChatGPT and LLMs conceptually, let's just stop thinking of them as intelligent beings. Let's instead think of them as the autocomplete programs we all use in our phones. We can think of ChatGPT and LLMs as autocomplete programs on steroids that we could actually build ourselves manually if we had enough time in a massive spreadsheet. Let me explain. If we were going to build our own ChatGPT manually, what we would have to do first is to make a spreadsheet where we are going to put all the words on the English dictionary as the rows. The Oxford Dictionary has around 170,000 words Word. So we would end up with a spreadsheet that looks something like this, for example. To build our autocomplete, the next step is to take all the words in the dictionary and put them all in a column each, which is when our Excel sheet is going to explode. We would end up with something like this. As rows, we have every word in the dictionary, and as columns, we also have every word in the dictionary. Our Excel will have 170,000 rows and columns, almost 29 billion cells. Our next goal would be to calculate what is the probability that the words in our vertical axis are followed by the words in our horizontal one. To find those probabilities, we would have to read as many documents, websites, comments, papers, and books as we can. And after a big effort, we would end up with something like this, where now we can tell with a high degree of probability that, for example, the word apple is followed by the word tree in 90% of the texts that we read, or that ball is followed by the word bounce, 85 5% of the cases, but followed by the word barks almost never. Okay, we're doing great so far, but now we have a problem. Our autocomplete only works with two words. We can autocomplete apple with tree and cat with the chases or sun with shines, but what about a third word? After apple tree, what comes next? We need to also autocomplete that. To add support for a third row, we now have to add even more rows to our already massive spreadsheet and then calculate again what the chances are for each word in the dictionary to follow the two words apple tree. We would have to do this over and over again for every set of two words and then do it again for every set of three words and so on and so on to be able to autocomplete even longer sentences. As you can see, conceptually, LLMs are not that hard to understand. What is impressive is the technical accomplishment on implementing an architecture that can do what our spreadsheet did but with thousands of words as context. That architecture is called the transformer and it was introduced on a paper by Google engineers called Attention is All You Need. Using this architecture, the LLM can use thousands of words as context just to guess what the next word is. Going back to our spreadsheet, that would be like having a whole book in our word column as context just to find out what the last word of the last chapter of the last sentence would be. Context is what helps LLMs guess better. That is why people talk about prompt engineering. The more context that you give to an LLM, the better it will perform. Think about it. If we give an LLM a word like how, there will be many words that can follow it with a high probability. We could be saying how are, how many, how come, etc. But if we give an LLM the words how much is, there will not be as many options as before. Now the words it, that, the will have a higher probability and the words him, her and those 
will have lower probabilities. So the LLM will choose how much is it because it is the most common across all the text it has seen. But now the question is, if it's all about probabilities, there will always be a word with the highest probability. Doesn't that mean that the LLM will autocomplete the text always using the same words? How can LLMs be creative if they are just a probability machine? This is when temperature comes in. Temperature is like a lever on an LLM that we can increase or decrease. Temperature is what makes ChatGPT an LLMs appear like they are created. When the temperature of the model is zero or close to it, the model will choose the words with the highest probability to complete. But as the temperature goes up, the model will start to choose words that maybe have less probability, but that still make semantic sense. So for example, to autocomplete the words, I walk my, the LLM will come up with a list of words and its probabilities. Maybe dog would be the highest, followed by pet, maybe followed by dogs, and so on. Since the temperature is low, the LLM will go with the highest probability and return I walk my dog. On that list, if dog, pet, and dogs were at the top, maybe cat, iguana, or cow are at the bottom. If we raise the temperature, the LLM will make more random choices and will start choosing words that are on the list so they make sense, but that have have a lower probability. And this is how the LLM might return, I walk my iguana, for example. We know that the LLM is a massive autocomplete program trained on the entire content of the internet, the good and the bad included. The last piece of the puzzle is to understand how we can turn this autocomplete program into a question and answering machine and give it the chatbot feeling. Also, since the program has seen the worst of the internet, how can we stop it from giving harmful answers and make it stay away from certain topics while being helpful on others? Like ChatGPT refusing to answer when asked how to make a bomb. The chatbot part, the way we can turn the autocomplete into a question answer machine is done by using something called supervised fine tuning. And here is where humans come in. To do supervised fine tuning, humans have to create a bunch of documents that have the format that humans want. In the case of ChatGPT, we can imagine an army of people and thousands of documents that have the question and answer format, which is what OpenAI wants for a chatbot. The next step is to train the autocomplete machine a little bit more, but this time with the documents the humans prepare. It has already seen the entire internet, but now at the end of its training, it will only see documents with the format humans want. This is called fine tuning, which is taking a model and training it a bit more on some extra custom data. The last part is how to stop the LLM from giving harmful answers. Answers. This is done by using reinforcement learning with human feedback, which works like this. After the LLM has been fine-tuned to become a question and answering machine as we saw before, humans will now ask questions to the LLM and the LLM will reply with five answers to the question. Humans, also called labelers, will rank those responses from best to worst. If the model gave harmful answers, in the case of ChatGPT, it makes sense to assume that the labelers were instructed to rank those harmful answers as the worst ones. Labelers will do this lots and lots of times until they have a big enough data set. And with this data set, a reward model will be trained. The only job of the reward model is to predict if a response by the autocomplete will be liked by a human or not. And finally, the last step is to take the wild, uncensored, autocomplete question and answer machine and train it again, but this time against the reward model. The raw autocomplete machine will get a question, generate an answer, and ask the reward model if the answer would be liked by a human or not. If the reward model says no, it will have to try again and again until it understands what a good answer is and learns that on its own. The LLM training itself against the reward model can happen lots and lots of times really fast because it does not need human intervention at all. Remember that by default, the model will be as crazy and wild as the internet is. Using reinforcement learning is how humans can give values to the model and change its political views, censor it, make it more or less likely to talk about a certain topic and so on. That's it for this video. If you found it useful, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. If you have time, go and watch the original talk. It goes into much more detail and talks about diffusion models, vectors and other interesting stuff. And remember that if you want to learn to code for free with me, all you have to do is click the link below. There you will find free courses on JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, and Next.js, among many others for absolutely free. Click the link below and I will see you there. Onjana, kamsahago, sanam hamdida. See you on the next one. Dame bye bye.